Hey guys, welcome to the very first video on virtual motorheads. I wanted to start this channel, I think it's almost a year ago, but I've been procrastinating the whole time. Last year, around June, July, I started getting back into watching Formula One and sold my old Logitech G29 wheel. Yes, we all have to start somewhere. Then I sold it and I bought myself a Thrustmaster TX wheel. Nice. Now I love that wheel and I was enjoying it until very recently. Um, one of my colleagues, he uh, bought himself a Moza R5 uh, bundle uh, last year. And he's like, you know what? I don't have time to play. It's on my desk. It's always in, in the way. Um, do you want to borrow it? And um, play a bit and see if you like it. Um, Maybe I'll sell it to you. I'm like, yeah, yes, I've never, never experienced a direct drive wheel in my life. I installed it on my rig, had to drill a couple of new holes to, to fit the base. Um, and I mean, you guys know. It was mind blowing. I couldn't get enough of it. I was like, I even started playing a set of Corsa Competition, which I never really played. I was just an Assetto Corsa guy. I love downloading the mods, trying out the new cars in VR, the new tracks, because the community is so big, as you know. And because this bug has bitten me so hard now with sim racing, and I'm in love with this direct drive wheel, I thought I'm gonna buy myself the recently released Moza KS GT wheel. Now the reason why I wanted to do this is because there's not a single video on YouTube that I could find that will show you what it feels like, and whether it's actually worth getting this wheel for your R5. Because I know there's a lot of us who own the R5 and we are very happy with, with the 5.5 newton meters of torque that we get from the wheel, and it's very detailed. So I'm excited. I want to play with this wheel. I'm going to share it with you. So let's jump into the unboxing and see what this is all about. All right. <laughs> Look what I have in front of me. I've been waiting, what is it, two or three days to open this. Um, and you guys know how we are. Um, my wife likes to call me a man-child. Um, <laughs> but she still loves me. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been waiting to open this for such a long time. And as you guys know, okay, two days is not such a long time, but it feels like forever. But as you guys know, as soon as we get a new toy like this, especially if, if it's something for our rig, for our sim rig, we want to install it immediately and just start racing. But um, I wanted to use it for this video. So, join me now while I open it for the first time and check it out. Okay. Um, as we all come to know Moza's and love Moza's packaging, it's flipping amazing. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna put it there. Um, wow, look at that. Uh, got some nice stickers in here. Um, okay. I know about all of this because I've been looking at the other reviews, um, but this looks awesome. A uh, little manual that I'll check out later because um, I do know that you need to uh, program this. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out together. Um, and then, um, yeah, tweezer for the stickers. That's really cool. Um, there's the stickers. Yo, it's, what is on you? Uh, TCS, bias, ABS, Yo, you can really, um, oh, they put a brake bias by the dials. <laughs> <clears throat> Gap, control, map, your RPM, I don't know why you would, what you would use that for. Um, fuel. DRS, um, then yeah, a whole bunch of other little round stickers for the buttons, like um, neutral. Uh, what? Right, John, yeah, they put a little protector on the tweezers as well. I don't know if they're afraid that you're gonna poke your eye out or something. Um, anyways, let's uh, take a look at the guest of honor. Um, yo, I just love the way 
Moza always packages their wheels. Uh, it looks freaking amazing. It feels like you are opening something very, very expensive, which it is to an extent, uh, but this is one of the most affordable wheels. All right, let's check it out. It's stuck in here. I don't want to break anything. That'll be tragic, but it's very, very good packaging. Wow, look at that. Yeah, nothing will happen with this. There's nothing secret under here, Moza. No, there's not. Um, let's just put that in there. Again, and let's check it out. Sure, look at that. That's a beautiful wheel, man. I am getting goosebumps. Is that okay to get goosebumps? Sure. I just want to go say, stop this video right now. Sorry, cheers guys, I'm going to play. <laughs> um, yo, this thing feels solid. Um, love the battle shifters. Um, very soft. And then we've got the two clutch pedals, which I think you can probably assign button, button press to it as well. Um, I'll see what the guys on the internet say about that. And then yeah, 10 buttons, two little joysticks. Um, I'll have to see how those work. And then your rotary dials at the top for your brake bias, diff. You could probably make it whatever you want and just put a sticker over there. Um, and then yeah, three other rotary dials, uh, traction control, turbo and ABS, which you can also probably make something completely different depending on the sticker that you put there. And then, oh yeah, engine mappings, amazing. All right, guys, I'm not gonna waste your time any further. I'm gonna put some of the stickers on here. Not some of them, I'm gonna put all of them on here. And um, yeah, then we're gonna jump into my rig and um, I'll see you just now. Hey guys, all right, I'm sitting in my rig right now and we are gonna take this bad boy for a spin. <laughs> As you can see, I've put all the stickers on the buttons. Uh, DRS, flashing lights, wiper, spit, S1, S2, just to name a few. And um, yeah, we're gonna put this on the Moza base now and then we're gonna set it up in the Moza Pithouse software. So let's go. Okay guys, like I said, we're gonna put the KS wheel on the Moza R5 base. I'm absolutely a huge fan of this quick release system and the sound that it makes. Let's go for it. Sure. Solid, good quality. A little bit of flex on my rig. But um, other than that, feels great, looks great. Uh, let's switch it on. Starts up like a spaceship. Love it. Okay, not a fan of the blue buttons, but I've read on the internet, if you take these two little joysticks and you press them towards the middle, you can change your button colors. Now I've already started thinking about what colors I would want. So let's go for it. Go with green at the top. Um, gonna go with yellow for that. Uh, on button and PL. Let's make that red, this one is too red and then I think these bottom buttons, we can make them green as well. I like that. I don't know what you guys think, but I love that. Um, yeah, now that we've set this up and the colors of the buttons are set up, let's jump into the software and see what else we can configure on this wheel. Okay, so now we are in the pit house software, Moza pit house software. As you can see, there's my wheel. Um, I've got in there already. Uh, I've already set it up the way I want it. And I've looked at some uh, recommendations online and so on. So I've, I've done it according to that. Um, we'll see what it feels like once we get into ACC. But uh, yeah, there's the wheel. I can just show you quickly, I've set up the RPM. I've got green, blue, and red. I like that. Someone might like yellow, orange, red, but there's not much difference between the yellow and the orange. So you might not even see that. So I like these three colors. Um, my clutch is set up dual, so you can see when I press these buttons, and let me press the other one. You can see they are separate. 
Um, let me just switch off these button numbers. Here we go. Yeah, and there you can see as I press the buttons, S1, S2, and then the sticks. Paddle shifters. Oh, they feel amazing. Your brake bias and your diff. Don't think I'll be using diff. TC, traction control, turbo, and ABS. We'll see how we're gonna set up those keys in game. Anyways, let's go to the wheel itself, the base itself. So here, I've watched quite a few channels from Boosted Media to, um, I think it's Beyond Racing or something. But yeah, these are like a combination of settings that I found. So you'll see my wheel angle stays on 900 road sensitivity. I leave it on five, because this is only a 5.5 Newton meter base. So I don't want to experience any force feedback clipping by losing some of the effects. So we're leaving that on five. Um, maximum wheel speed, 70%. You can make that 80, you can make that 60. I'm leaving it on 70. Um, I actually can't feel a difference. <laughs> then um, advanced settings, you'll see the torques 100%. We want as much juice out of this little base as we can. Uh, steering wheel inertia. Um, oh, it chose that for me because I normally have the ES wheel. So yeah, the steering wheel inertia, parameter hands or protection. I don't know how that will affect it, but I think this thing can give you a nice uh, judo chop if you don't watch what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> the natural inertia, I'm not going to read through all of this. Leave that on 150%. I see some people switch it off completely, but I'm going to leave it there. Wheel friction, that makes it feel like it's, um, I think like it's attached. No, that's not it. But yeah, go read it. So wheel friction, I see 15% recommended. Rest, we leave it on 0%. On we don't want too many artificial effects influencing the forces that we are going to be feeling from this wheel. Um, force feedback equalizer. Yeah, this I also saw. We leave it 100%. Then it goes up to... Here by the 80 km per hour curve effects, 160%, the rest we leave 200. HF vibration, guys, I don't know what this is. If someone can tell me, I'd appreciate that, but I'm leaving that at 100 hertz, I don't know, at 0%, I don't know what that is. Uh, we don't touch the base fo force feedback curve, and then under miscellaneous, uh, soft limit stiffness, that is when you hit the limit of the wheel, it's either gonna be like soft, or it's gonna feel like you're hitting a brick wall when you when you reach the limit of the um, what you call it the steering angle. When you reach the limit of the steering angle, it won't feel like you're hitting a brick wall. So yeah, um, now that we've got the wheel set up, let's jump into ACC. All right, so I'm in ACC. Uh, the track that uh, I've chosen is Suzuka. I don't know the track too well, so you might see me go off but this is just so that we can practice a bit and see what it feels like before we jump into a more well-known track and race against the AI. Um, the settings is exactly the same as what I had it on my ES wheel. Uh, it's got a 83% uh, force feedback and um, yeah we're gonna see what this feels like. So yeah I've got my uh, GoPro switch on as well so that you can enjoy this ride with me. Here we go. I also want to say that I use a sim hub, so I've got I've got base shakers attached to my seat and to my pedals, which just gives me that little bit of immersion. Oh my goodness! See what I'm talking about? <laughs> Let's try that again. And how does the force feedback feel? I think it's too early to tell. One thing is for certain that it feels completely different. 
than with that ES wheel because remember this is 300 millimeter in diameter but I can feel when the car starts sliding and when there's grip it means all the detail is there so let's just finish this lap but I still have a lot of learning to do I mean I've been only playing since last year June July and this is my first direct drive wheel but it's a it's an awesome experience to hold a GT wheel while you play it's different feels more real oh and I love the base shake because I can just feel when the car starts sliding And let's just race a bit. Yeah, there's enough forces coming from this little base. Come on. Horrible little chicane, this on Suzuka. I think let's do one more. <laughs> let's see if we can do a clean lap. No. No. Let's just finish this one. And then we can race against the AI. On a track that I know better. Oh! That's no good. But like I said, on this little R5 base, it's still enjoyable to drive with this bigger wheel. What makes it awesome is also the wheel is very light. I mean, I think it's 1.2 kilograms. So. I'm just gonna try and concentrate a bit. Oh, love going over the curbs. Love the feedback from the base shakers. Oh, and there I go too wide again. It's okay. Horrible little chicane here. But yeah, more than enough detail coming from the force feedback on this wheel. So guys, it's totally worth it. All right. Okay. Whoa. Okay, we're going to jump into a more well-known track and race against the AI and see what that's like. Cool, let's do it. Right, I'm about to race the AI. I have um, chosen Spa as a track. It's a track that I'm quite familiar with. And I've chosen the Ferrari 296. Um, it was released a while ago as part of new DLC for ACC. So randomly they put me in 11th place and I am racing against 19 other cars. So this is going to be fun and uh, <laughs> let's see what I can do. Off we go. All right, let's go. Uh, 
Hopefully we will have no incidents. See if I can take this Lambo and the Porsche. I just don't want to damage my safety rating. <laughs> it's still very low, but we're getting there. It's nice and clean. That's why. But this wheel feels amazing, man. It's uh, totally worth it. As long as you set it up correctly, you'll get the details that you need. And make sure you get some base shakers for that extra immersion sorry mr gdr Lovely. Yes, lose control. Damn it. Terrible. Dead lost. Oh well. Let's see if we can catch them. <laughs>
I just feel a little nudge. the end of our <laughs> race against the AI. <laughs> wow. All right. Um, let's just switch that car off. Oh, wait. Let's switch it off. That was insane. All right. So, yes. Just to finalize and um, recap this wheel is amazing it is totally worth it for this little r5 base um, and um, it's extremely enjoyable make sure you get yourself some gloves not only does it make you look cool but it feels great adds to the immersion um, but yeah thanks for watching this atrocious race with me um, i had fun but uh, as you can see still a lot to still lots to learn um, but yeah, I mean, that's part of the game, huh? As long as we have fun. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks. Guys, we've come to the end of my video. And I just want to thank you if you stuck with me from the beginning to the end. Kudos to you. You know what to do. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more of what I can come up with, subscribe to my channel. And um, yeah. I'm looking forward to spending more time with you guys here on YouTube. I'll see you again next time. Cheers.